With ridership down about a third of what it was just five years ago, Ubers and Lyfts outnumbering cabs by 9 to 1, and a medallion crisis that left its drivers drowning in debt, yellow taxis remain an iconic symbol in New York. Over the years, they've appeared in countless movies, TV shows, and have been a reflection of the city's cultural identity. Any picture of New York, it has one of a handful of things in it. It either has the Statue of Liberty, uh, the Empire State Building, Central Park, or yellow cabs. But it's a tough job with drivers on average working nine and a half hours a day, six days a week. And more than 90% of drivers were born outside of the U.S. The car payment, the insurance, the gas, the toll. You know, sometimes I, I miss payment. I, I get to pay my credit card to pay the bill, the mortgage. Taxi driving historically has had a huge turnover rate because the job is so hard uh, and these days especially with, with lease hiring you have to, to, to pay money to make money uh, most drivers I talk to now don't make a cent until Wednesday the taxi industry in New York has been no stranger to confrontation and resistance and the taxi workers alliance has advocated for drivers for the past 25 years we've had strikes against the taxi limousine commission our regulator We've had a hunger strike against a mayor. You know, we've had protests against garages and hedge funds, and now, you know, Uber and Lyft, which are large Wall Street-backed companies. So we've, we've had to fight on so many fronts. Taxis in New York started in the form of horse and buggies, which were used until the early 1900s. The electric vehicle company was the first taxi car company in New York that saw some success. It continued to use electric vehicles until the company collapsed with the rise of combustion engine cars in 1907. The fares were inexpensive compared to today. New York's middle class could handle them, and that's one of the reasons why uh, taxis became so popular so quickly. The infrastructure of New York uh, is not perfect. Uh, but things like the yellow cab system are central to its function. And it became a popular way to travel among the middle and upper classes. After the 1929 market crash, an increasing number of workers wanted to drive taxis. New York City had about 30,000 taxi drivers in the 1930s. As a result, Mayor LaGuardia implemented the Haas Act, giving the city official jurisdiction over the industry and limiting the number of licensed taxi drivers to just below 17,000. Initially, when they were put out, they were sold for $10 a piece. But unregulated car services were still picking people up off the streets, especially in the outer boroughs. As a result, all official taxis were painted their iconic yellow color in the 1960s. The Taxi and Limousine Commission was created in 1971 to regulate the taxi business outside of Manhattan and illegal or jitney operations. And this came out as a result of yellow cab drivers being unwilling, either for reasons of prejudice, or because they didn't want to serve the outer boroughs, being unwilling to go to upper Manhattan, to Brooklyn or Bronx. Driving a taxi was also becoming more dangerous. At the time, crime in the city was rampant due to the economic decline and drug epidemic. Over 200 cab drivers were murdered in New York from 1980 to 1994. And in 1991, efforts to organize taxi drivers began to find success, and the New York Taxi Workers Alliance was eventually formed. A medallion is a metal license affixed to the hood of a yellow taxi. It gives the holder exclusive rights to operate that taxi in the city and acts as a permit, indicating that the driver is legally allowed to pick up passengers on the street. They are typically bought through an auction, which has seen prices soar over a million dollars. This is Richard Chow. He's been driving for the past 17 years and owns one of the roughly 13,000 medallions in the city. So after I driving like a, about six months, and then uh, I decided to buy the taxi to the medallion. Medallion prices remained relatively low for decades after their inception. It's only in the last 15 or 20 years that it's really gone up way in value. Actually, it was only worth twenty-five dollars or $30,000 as recently as 2000 You know, I make it American dream, so I make it money, you know, support. You know, my kid, my younger brother, he saw me dead and, uh, and 
I'm doing good, you know, and I, as a driver, you know, support the make money, support the family, and and then he also interesting to buy the medallion. Medallion prices were artificially inflated in the early 2010s due to predatory lending, the lure of a rare asset, and industry leaders purposely overpaying. And then in 2010, he bought the medallion from the New York City. He paid $700,000. So after that, uh, the Uber and Lyft come in this the taxi industry. We, we lost the almost 50 percent of the revenue so and my younger brother he not make enough money to pay back hit the loan from he borrowed from the bank a lot of people do blame uber and lyft and the other high frequency dispatch companies for the problem and while they certainly catalyzed the recognition of the problem the real problem started years before and it started in much the same way as the mortgage crisis. Andrew Milgram co-founded Marblegate, which is currently the largest private medallion lender in New York. The medallion was once valued at a million dollars, and then that price crashed. At its low point, it was around $70,000. Meanwhile, the debts that the medallion owners are carrying, on average, were about $450,000. So it was impossible to keep up with a mortgage of $450,000 when the revenue from the streets could only support capital at about $70,000. And as a result of that, we saw massive bankruptcies, foreclosures, and just a tremendous crisis of poverty for the owner drivers who could not afford to go bankrupt. So in 2018, he's committed suicide he jumped to the East River, and I lost. I lost my brother. I'm. I'm heartbroken. But I'm strong. I'm. I'm keep fighting, and for the you know, for the our you know, crisis, the the taxi industry crisis, and then I don't like to. I don't want to see another driver committed suicide like my brother. Kenny was one of nine drivers who died by suicide after struggling to find work in a saturated industry, several of whom also had the pressures of hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt after purchasing a medallion. The medallion crisis has been a really painful, you know, a chapter in, in the history of this industry. I mean, the fact that this was a crisis that, that's been marred by suicide really says it all. Dozens of protests took place following the driver's suicides. After going on a 15-day hunger strike, the drivers reached a deal with Mayor de Blasio on a medallion relief program in 2021. Since then, over 1,800 drivers have been relieved of over $400 million worth of debt. That's not an easy feat, right? Uh, and what this really means to a taxi driver uh, was that they had about $750,000 worth of debt, some of them, and it brought it down to $170,000 with a city back guarantee. Since the popularization of Uber and Lyft in New York City and the subsequent fall of taxi medallion prices, e-hailing has become the norm. Uber and Lyft launched in New York in 2011 and 2014, respectively, and by 2016 already had about 40,000 cars in the city. We were fighting for a temporary one-year cap on the number of new vehicles, um, so the city could really study the impact of all these cars. And in one weekend, Uber famously spent $10 million in lobbying to destroy that bill. This had taxi drivers see a roughly 50% drop in trips from 2013 to 2019. We worked with the New York City Council over a three-year period, and in 2018, we put in a strict cap of new vehicles entering the Uber and Lyft and traditional for-hire vehicle markets. 
and that cap stood at about 125,000 vehicles and in our perspective, way too many vehicles uh, at that time. COVID made life even worse for taxi drivers. A lot of drivers moved to different areas of work, right? They left the industry and we saw that uh, that died from 125,000 vehicles to about 100,000 vehicles. And that's where we are today. So going into COVID, um, the taxis have declined to 22%. So from 47% share to 22, and ride hailing had grown from 53 to 78%. Um, during COVID effectively, taxis went to almost zero, actually bottomed out at 5%. And the um, ride hailing actually got, was 95%. And with the market now flooded by roughly 80,000 on-demand car drivers, taxis have continued to struggle finding work. And it's been pretty consistent now for almost two years with um, ride hailing at 86% of the volume in the New York Tri-State area versus taxis at 14%. And so really what it tells you is that kind of the taxi industry um, has kind of really, you know, ceded a massive amount of share. And Uber is showing no signs of slowing down. While it has struggled with profitability over the course of its existence, it has turned the tides in recent years. Last year they had free cash flow of about 400 million. We estimate this year it'll be about 3 billion, and you know, within two years it's 6 billion, 6.5 billion. So, I mean, they basically are at a point where like, they can then invest that money in growth. After years of neglect, many involved in the industry are continuing to push for innovation and improved working conditions in the city. The industry had stopped treating its most important customer with respect and uh, value. And that, that customer is the driver. Because at the, at the center of the industry is um, the driver and what they are doing on a day-to-day -day basis. It's a difficult job. It's a very, very hard, lonely job. And the industry as a whole, especially taxis, is still recovering from the pandemic. There was a 5% increase in monthly trips for both Medallion and Outer Borough taxis from February 2022 to February 2023. When I first came in, there was over uh, 7,500 vehicles uh, in storage, or half the fleet. Today, uh, there is about uh, 5,000 vehicles in storage and 8,000 active taxis. Uh, and what that means is that the industry is recovering uh, and that passengers are choosing uh, with their money. New York and the TLC are also working on shifting taxis away from gas and toward electric vehicles to improve air quality, noise pollution, and carbon footprints. We are slowly ramping up and what we're thinking uh, is that by 2024, there'll be some sort of number that will hit about 6% electric vehicles and then ramp up all the way to 2030 by 100 percent. Apart from switching to electric vehicles, the New York taxi industry has made other efforts to innovate and keep up with e-ride hail apps. Uber and Lyft have partnered with Curb and Arrow so you can e-hail a yellow taxi through their apps. However, using Curb and Arrow can mean a loss of fares for taxi drivers. These apps make up less than 1 percent of overall trips by yellow cabs. Uber collaborating with Curb and Arrow um, has not been good for the drivers because it's been an attempt to really lower the amount that drivers have a right to earn on every trip. New York also recently confirmed that the first congestion tolling in the U.S. will be coming to the city sometime early next year. It will charge drivers up to $23 to enter Midtown and Lower Manhattan. While it would only require taxis and four higher vehicles to pay the toll once a day, the loss could still be detrimental for drivers struggling to make ends meet. What's really um, urgent for the yellow cab industry is uh, fighting for an exemption from a congestion pricing scheme that the state wants to implement um, and to finish up our fight on the medallion debt forgiveness.